Good afternoon. It is time for our special coronavirus retreat. <laughs> Last Sunday service. Don't worry, we'll be doing one every Sunday, but it won't be on this theme. Today is the 89th day. That makes tomorrow the 90th day. Man, it seems like it only began yesterday. That's something to really keep in mind, to be very mindful. Even if you feel like the days are dragging, be very mindful that time does pass very quickly. That'll especially be the case if you ask yourself if you have, you know, what you've been doing the past 90 days. You know, that's already a quarter of a year. Wow. So, you know, what have you made progress on your spiritual path or uh, things to be done around the house? You know, that honeydew list that sits there waiting for attention. So whatever you've done, this is a good time to start kind of weighing it out because uh, tomorrow will be our last day. I'm going to call it the, the wrap up. And then, you know, we're going to be off to other things. So welcome to today's service. If this is your first time attending uh, my Unity uh, service, it'd be nice to have music and all that, but there's copyright laws and stuff, so I can't even play the things I'd like. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of time for prayer, reflection, meditation, hopefully a lesson that you can bring with you into the week. So let's take a minute now, and uh, I'm going to share that unity is, uh, we practice what's called practical Christianity, Yet we behold the divinity in all people and see God in all faiths. We don't see unity as limited. For some people, unity is a lifelong spiritual path. For other people, it is a source of prayer and inspiration that enhances the path they are already on. Perhaps in a traditional church, whatever. I would imagine even uh, an agnostic or an atheist could get some good, good thoughts out of our unity message. So we will begin then with um, a, little bit, a, a little bit of centering. I invite you to relax, get comfortable. I think I'll try to get comfortable. I'm still, I'm small for the chair. Just, I'm like Lily Tomlin's, uh, what was her? character's name, Edith, Edith Ann, sitting in the great big chair. All right, well, let us relax. I invite you to take three deep, slow, cleansing breaths. Slowly breathe into the count of four. Hold to a slow count of four. Release to a slow count of four. and hold for a count of four. I invite you to repeat that two more times. Feels good. You know when you are breathing and focusing on your breathing, your mind does not think of anything else. You're just breathing and releasing. When you inhale, you actually can't think of anything else. So that's a good thing and it's a good break because we want to calm our brain down so we can bring ourselves out of the limited human consciousness that that binds us. We want to come up to greater belief, greater hope, and 
greater opportunities to grow. I was listening to my uh, friend, uh, Reverend Letty Hammett, who is from um, Clearwater, Unity Clearwater, Florida. And I, I like to listen to her whenever I get a chance. She's very inspiring and ministers to the minister, even as it were. Today, she was talking about Reverend Johnny Coleman, who is a unity minister ordained somewhere in the 50s. I'm mentioning it today because uh, Letty was talking about it because of the racial issues that we are balancing now. And if you've been around unity for a long time, you may know, and if unity is new to you, you may not know, back in the day, back in the, you know, up until uh, the, the 60s, uh, Unity was born in, in, uh, in the Midwest, and the segregation was very prevalent, and uh, even at Unity Village, where there was a pool, it said uh, whites only, and that wasn't a judgmental whites only. It was those were the rules in those days, which I'm happy to say are behind us, at least at Unity. Johnny Coleman was one of the first people that stood against that because she'd found the Unity teachings. And the Unity teachings said, we are all God's children didn't say anything about color. One day after she was ordained, she took a bunch of children to swim at the pool on a hot day. When the kids saw the sign, whites only, they all backed off because they were all black. And she took that, she wrote a note and put it on the sign and the note said, black does not wash off in water. Everybody swims. And she got those, she literally pushed the kids in the pool, boop, 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 you're gonna swim now. And everybody swam, and I believe that was never mentioned again, that that day the pool was integrated. But the most important thing I learned about Reverend Johnny Coleman today, and I have met her, and I, the wonderful uh, minister back in the day, I met her a long, long time ago, and I have some of her books, but she made a, a fascinating statement that said, I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts that makes the things in my life and my world. Think about that. Think about the fact that you, say that to yourself, I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts that make the things in my world. Wow, it's pretty heavy duty, isn't it? We are the thinkers. And because we are the thinkers, as people of like mind get together and hold those thoughts for a better possibility, it can happen. I know a lot of you are discouraged. I have discouraging moments myself. And for me, thanks to the Unity teaching, I have been able to uh, probably make it through a lot better than someone who has no, uh, no knowledge of this type of positive thought. Positive thought in the midst of negative circumstances even. A lot of us are, are very concerned because we don't know when is this going to end? When are things going to get better? I look at those numbers every day. As I've said before, I don't look at them out of fear or holding a vision that they're stuck there. I look at them for the sign that they are going down. And it is tough to look at those numbers sometimes and see that they're not going down. It is tough 
sometimes to look at the news and see the protests that are still going on over two weeks now. It stresses my soul that I see things and wonder why has there not been change. At the same time, I know some of the reasons why. And that's why I wanted to share with you a message today called what if? I'm sure we've all been praying for God to show us the way in this, for God to make an appearance and rescue us, but that's not jo God's job. We already have all we know, the wisdom of the teachings of Jesus, other spiritual masters. We have the teachings. We just have to use it. Therefore, we have to ask ourselves what's standing in the way. I'd like to share a, a, uh, a reading by Lowell Fillmore. Lowell Fillmore was the son of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who are the, uh, the co-creators of the Unity Movement co-founders. God creates, <laughs> we develop, we make. It's called The Answer, and I, I would like you to reflect as I read this, to find a peaceful spot in your heart and ask yourself, what answers are you looking for? What what ifs are in your mind and your heart? It says, when, a, when for a purpose, I had prayed and prayed and prayed until my words seemed worn and bare. With arduous use, I had knocked and asked and knocked and asked again, and all my fervor and persistence brought no hope. I paused to give my weary brain a rest and ceased my anxious human cry. In that still moment, after self had tried and failed, there came a glorious vision of God's power. And lo, my prayer was answered in that hour. We might not know the hour that our prayer is going to be answered, but that doesn't mean it is not going to be answered. It will be answered in God time, and it will be answered in God's right answer for us, which is not always the answer we think we want. The scripture for today is from Matthew 6, 34, and it says, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will have troubles of its own, sufficient for the day is its own troubles. What if, ooh, there's that what if, what if we spent this day asking ourselves, what if? You know what the problem is with asking ourselves what is if? Generally, once that, that thought presents itself, we probably uh, lock into the least desirable uh, answer, the answer that gives us fear, and we stop thinking any further. We have to take our what if further. We have to open up. So if you find yourself thinking, what if, stop. You know that stop, look, listen. Stop. What if? And seriously, look at the question you just asked. 
What if? What is the question you're asking? Now, for those of you who have been following along the past 90 days, 89 days, you will know that we talk about the higher consciousness, that spiritual part of us, the spiritual mind that is our connection with God, or we get locked into the limitation of human or carnal consciousness, the, the physical limited thinking of the human being. Remember, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Unfortunately, a lot of the times, we feel more like human beings having an occasional spiritual experience. How about if we try to let that go? And <clears throat> when we're asking that question, what if to lift our consciousness higher for the best outcomes of our what ifs? Here's a common what if. What if I'm wrong? What if you're wrong? Did something come up as we were in our meditation period where you brought up a question where you've been asking yourself, what if? What if I'm wrong? Well, you have to ask yourself, what cause am I sending forth? What is the possible effect? And for all rights and purposes, if you're wrong and you take a chance at something, then best you get is a lesson to try, well, the best you get is to have it work. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, then you get a lesson. That's another thing. Instead of our mind, our human mind, ruling us and saying, well, that's it, screw that one up, we don't try again. So therefore, we don't complete our lesson. We start it. Can you imagine if you were in school and you did a quiz and the, you flubbed the first answer and you knew you flubbed it? What if you quit then? <laughs> what if you were going to get the other nine questions right and you'd get a 90, which qualifies as an A, but you didn't because you quit at the first question because you figured you got it wrong? Then the other question is, what if I'm right? Now, what if I'm wrong or what if I'm right are neither positive nor negative. It depends on the other side of the what if. What if you can't just eat one Lay's potato chip? That's kind of a safe, a safe uh, example to use because we do push our luck, don't we? We say, well, you know, what's the worst that could happen? And then we do it and then we go, I wish I hadn't done that. So there is that piece of it. But then again, if you learn the lesson, you profit from it. Many of us have the question, what if this doesn't end for a year? You know, that's what the news will say. It'll say, oh, you know, like they were saying, won't have a vaccine for at least 18 months. Now they're saying maybe by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe not. What if? What if they don't come up with a vaccine? What will you do then? I would imagine the best you can to take care of yourself. What if it ends tomorrow? Are you ready if it ends tomorrow? Are you ready? You know, Sylvia Brown had written that article where she said that um, the corona, that there was going to be this respiratory virus and it was going to be horrible and many people would die. She wrote that like 40 years ago. And then it would suddenly end and would be gone for 10 years. Then it would come back. What if she was right and all of a sudden it was gone? How would your life change? We balance. What if it's gone? What if it's not? What if you take the road less traveled? The road less traveled is what's called the high road. It's a difficult road because not many people take it. 
It's a road of walking in faith despite people telling you it's never going to work. It's a, a road that because it is difficult, you can achieve greater heights than others. Are you willing to do that? Or what if you choose to take the easier path, the well-beaten, the well-traveled path that everybody's doing it? You know, for some people, that's enough. They're happy. I have a friend who I've asked. He's a young man. He actually is uh, Sammy's husband, widower. And uh, I asked him before they got married, what are your dreams for the future? What do you want to do? And he said, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And some people are. We need people to do all kinds of things. We need the stars on the stage or screen, and we need the audience to receive the gift of the show and entertainment that they have to give us. What if you never reach great heights? Does that make you any less of a child of God? No. As long as you're being the best child of God, you know how to be. Here's an interesting what if. What if you knew you were going to die in five days? What if you knew that? What would be different in your life? What would you do differently? Maybe you can do that now. Oh, some people might think, well, I've only got five days. I'm going to live it up now. What if you knew you were going to live to be 120? How would you live then? I don't know, but if it was me, I think I'd probably take good care of my body. There's a funny story. I'm going to try to recall it. I haven't told it in a long time. There was once a woman about 35 years old. She was walking across the street and she got hit by a bus. And she went to heaven. And St. Peter met her at the pearly gates and he said, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here for another 25 years. She said, oh. Now, it's got to be longer than 25 years. <laughs> 45 years. And she said, oh, I don't know what to do. And he said, I'm sending you back. So he sent her back. Well, she was pretty thrilled that she had, he said, she wasn't going to be coming back for, you know, 45 more years. So time went on and she got herself a facelift and she did all these other things. And would you know that it was only five years later, guess what? She was walking across the street again, probably texting, got hit by a bus again, bang, wound up back at the pearly gates. And St. Peter says, yes, can I help you? And she said, hey, don't you remember me? You told me last time I got hit by a bus that I had 45 more years to live. That was only 10 years ago. And he said, oh, I didn't recognize you. She'd gotten all plastic surgery and everything and didn't recognize her. But it does raise, I know that was probably a poorly told joke. Okay, just let it go. <laughs> but we have to think about that. If we knew we were gonna live to be 120, we probably would change the way we live. So if you say to yourself, oh my gosh, what if I, what if I get COVID and, and, and die, you know? You have to ask yourself right away, what if I don't? What if I don't? Um, what if, and some of you, let's say you've been following me for 89 days, what if you began your journal after that first day as I suggested it? You would have 
three months of your experience that you can look back at when these days, when the memory of these days start to fade and you can look at it. So those of you who did start a journal, bravo. And those of you who didn't, get started now. Start with a reflection of the past 90 days. I was thinking about those 90 days and I realized that um, that's, that's three months and in, um, in uh, pregnancy, those days would be called the first trimester. That means trimester, there's three parts. What if we considered that we conceived of a new way of living, of a new world three months ago? And now we are going to be, you know, six more months to go through the second and third trimester. Now, one of the signs of the second trimester is what's called the quickening. That's when that uh, little flutter, when the baby first starts to move in the womb. And, oh my gosh, I remember that time. At first I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to gasp. <laughs> and it fluttered here and it fluttered there. And, it, and I, then I realized, oh my goodness, that was my baby. And I, I can't tell you what a beautiful feeling that is. Those of you that have kids do know it is amazing. Well, maybe in your own life, you're going to have a quickening. You're going to have a realization that you've been learning and growing in this past three months and want to grow more and more so you can focus on your growth. Now, one of the things that I invite you to take a really long, hard look at in the days ahead is to watch your self-talk. Please watch your self-talk. And because we will find ourselves, if you find yourself uh, saying things that are cold, that are mean to yourself, that are depressing, that are discouraging, stop right then. S catch yourself. Stop that negative self-talk that says, I can't, I don't know, I, I, you know, I can't do it, I'll never do it, I'm ugly, I'm whatever. You know what a challenge I have? Every day when I look at the mirror and I see this crazy hair, um, I have to remind myself, <laughs> I am cute. And I don't care what that reflection is saying to me, I'm okay and I look okay. And one day this hair is gonna be bright purple and short again, just the way I like it. But it is tempting to pick on myself. We might pick on ourselves for gaining too much weight during the process. That's easy enough to cure. Just start eating differently and get a little bit more exercise. You don't make any, you know, uh, you don't have to do any big crazy stuff. Now, a, an image came to me that I wanted to share with you. As I was thinking about the what ifs, what if this, what if that, what if this, and what came to my mind was the image of, uh, we've seen this in the circus and on America's Got Talent. Somebody takes a board that looks like a, a skateboard, but dear God, no, that has more wheels on it. They take a board and they put it on top of a ball and they stand on top of that ball and they balance back and forth, you know? And I was kind of seeing, seeing us all, you know, like trying to balance on this crazy ball with that, we don't know what direction it's going to uh, to turn in. And what, what if we even saw that this ball that we're standing on the board that, that is supported by the, the ball, what if the floor started to move? So the ball started to move. Can you imagine if we learned how to handle that kind of balance? We see people do it in the circus all the time. That means it can be done. Where we're working though, right in here. So if we're talking about higher consciousness and lower consciousness and we envision this board 
you know, that is teeter-tottering about, am I gonna have high thoughts or low thoughts or where am I going with this? Wow, what skill. We can do this and we can grow. I want you to think about that today. I want you to think about your what ifs. Try to catch yourself. If you're real busy when you, a what if comes to you, write it down and think about it during the prayer time that I hope you take every day. Time for quiet, for reflection, and for seeing great possibilities for ourselves, our families, and the world we live in. Now it's time that would normally be called the offering, where the, uh, the baskets passed and the collections taken, and then it is given. Now, I would like to ask yourself, who can you give to today? What can you give? Whatever you give, give the best you have. Don't be afraid to share who you are, what you are, and what you have. We remember the story of the widow's might. She only had two coins, and she gave them both and trusted God. And that was great faith. I'm not telling you to give everything you got. I'm not telling you to give till it hurts. I'm telling you to give till it feels good. Give what you have to give. The other half of giving is receiving. You may be one of those who is in a position where you need very much to receive and feel you have little to give. Give your faith to God. Give your trust to God. And when someone offers something to you, do not suffer under false pride. Let go of false pride and be willing to receive. God is our source and God blesses us with abundant blessings. God is the source and many people and many ways are channels of that source. The same way as the reservoir is the source of water for a town. And it is the, uh, the rivers and such and the waterways that go from that reservoir, the piping, whatever, that brings the water to the people. The same way God is our source of abundance and we participate in it by giving and receiving. We do not give in order to receive. We give because we have received. So I invite you to see in your hand right now your offering. Is it money? Is it time? Is it talent? Is it listening? Whatever it is, is it forgiveness? Mm. I invite you to hold that in your hand and to bring it to your heart and to affirm with me divine love through flowing through us blesses and multiplies all that we are, all that we have, all that we give and all that we receive. Thank you, God. And we send forth these gifts with all the love in our heart to do the will, the work, and the way of God. <sighs> now you can just figure out who you're giving it to and give, and it will be a pleasure. And for you and for me, and for all that we love, and hold in prayer, we know and affirm the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. 
Thank you for being with me this morning. If you came in late, just know you can go back in just a couple minutes and watch it from the beginning. Also, I'll be posting the YouTube version later and you can watch it. And if you like it, uh, you can click like or share it with someone or you can click subscribe in the YouTube picture that comes up in the lower right hand corner and you'll be notified whenever I post something. So God bless you, my friends. Have a bright, beautiful, better than average day. I behold the divinity in you.